Well, I heard it. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Was that for me? Yeah, <laughs> um, well, tell us how Catherine started. Like, where did you get the idea yeah. for it? Okay, so it it started from a bit of a making disaster. Is how I'd kind of explain it. So I think about, it'll be just over a year ago now, I didn't feel like I was doing very much that was creative and I really, I work in the arts so I have a lot of creativity but I didn't feel like I was doing any of the kind of making or artwork that I used to do when I was little. So I was like, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to set myself some challenges. It was coming up to New Year, so kind of resolutions. And I started a blog in which I did the very stupid thing of writing down all the things I wanted to learn to do and then publishing them, which I, I just don't think anyone should do ever because the pressure is insane. Um, so I did that and one of them was learning to knit. And so then I kind of embarked on this journey about learning to knit and it was absolutely disastrous because I don't have the patience to knit. And so um, a friend of mine who also wanted to learn, we'd found another friend that was going to teach us. So she came along with me and we found that the only way that we could really make a go of it was to sit with a bottle of wine, <laughs> which makes us sound bad, but really it helped. Um, sit there with a bottle of wine, have a chat and just bring the kind of intensity of trying to get this thing right, right down and make it much, much more about hanging out, kind of social we could sit there and talk about what a disaster we were having with our knitting, laugh about drop stitches. And, it, and that really, really helped and we got a lot further doing it that way. And it kind of got me thinking about that relationship between how many people want to be able to make stuff, like how many people really like playing with things and playing with fabrics and sewing and just kind of messing around. And that can then lead to making something that's actually really cool and really beautiful. But obviously lots of people haven't done that since they're at school, so there's this very weird pressure that seems to sit around crafting in particular, where people think that if they're going to be making, making something and crafting something, it has to be perfect, and it has to be brilliant, and it has to turn out as this amazing thing you could photograph and put online, and, and I, re I really don't think that's the case. And so that sort of combination of having a drink with your friends, sitting, having a chat, and then making something, and finishing something that's very simple, but has got your personality stamped on it. And it's something you can be proud, you know, it's definitely finished, it's something you can show other people, and it hopefully will go off and inspire you to try other things. And that's kind of where Crafting in Cabaret Club came from. So it's almost, it's funny really, because the event is almost about creating a series of distractions from the fact that you're doing craft. <laughs> so that you'll finish having made something and go, oh my God, I, I watched these performances, I hung out with my friends, I had some drinks, I had a really nice afternoon. Oh, and I made, I made this. I didn't realise that was going to happen. So that's the kind of premise. This is the tale of the thing she did. That bad cat called Squint Eye Squid, oh my. With the squinty eye, eye, eye.